I have always wanted to make my very own Matchbox doll. I'm showing a couple of inspiration pictures right here of some really cute Matchbox dolls that I have seen online. And I finally put together a really simple project for a cute little Matchbox bunny. This bunny is about four inches tall and a couple of inches wide. And the little Matchbox home is about four and a half inches tall and about four inches wide. And this project is designed for the total beginner. So this is something that I teach kids how to make so you could teach kids in your life. Or if you just don't sew very much, this is something that you can definitely do. So let me walk you through it. First, I'm gonna show you the materials that you need to make the little bitty matchbox bunny. The fabric that I'm using is a soft, organic cotton fleece and it has a little bit of stretch to it so I would say any soft fuzzy fabric with some stretch is nice for this project but if you have a fabric that doesn't stretch that should work too so really just almost any fabric will work for the bunny this is the fleecy fabric that I am using the super simple embroidery on the face and the ears is done with just some embroidery floss and an embroidery needle. And there is a little bit of stuffing inside the body of the bunny. And I used some scraps of cotton batting and even some of the scraps of fabric to stuff the bunny. You're also going to want a super simple pattern piece for your bunny. This pattern piece is four and a quarter inches tall and two and a half inches at the widest. And I just drafted a little sort of bunny body shape and cut it out, folded it in half and cut it again to make it nice and symmetrical. I also drafted a really simple ear pattern piece. This is two and a half inches tall, about one inch wide. And then I also drafted the little paw pattern pieces, and these are all one inch tall. And before I forget, this little bunny shape was inspired by another YouTuber who I will put in the description box below this video. So I used that video to inspire the start of this bunny, but I did add some little arms and my own personal touch. In order to make the matchbox for the bunny to go in, I used two pieces of cardstock and two pieces of cardstock will actually make two boxes. But the way the paper gets cut, you need two pieces um, to put it together. And I'm gonna just show you how to cut this paper. So one of your pieces of cardstock, you're gonna cut in half lengthwise so that you end up with a piece that's 11 inches um, long and four and a half inches wide. And then the other piece you are going to cut in half going down the center line of the paper, but then you're also gonna trim away a quarter inch. So you're gonna trim away a quarter inch from the um, eight and a half inch side and trim away a quarter inch from the five and a half inch side so that you have a piece that's eight and a quarter inch by five and a quarter inch. And then when you have your two pieces, you are going to do some really simple folding in order to create the box. And I am gonna walk you through how to fold in um, an upcoming step. The first step to making the little bunny is to get your pattern pieces and then you need to cut out two of the main body pattern pieces, four of the ears and four of the hands. So I am going to take my pattern piece and I am going to trace it onto some scraps of fabric and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut out two of the body pieces and four of the other two pieces.
Now that all the pieces are cut out, the next step is to embroider a little face on one of the piece, the body pieces, and then I embroider a little bit of pink if you want on the ears. You could definitely skip this part if you like. And I gotta say my embroidery is nothing fancy, very, very simple. Um, so to make the face, I am gonna just use some black embroidery floss and I'm gonna do a few really simple stitches to create the eyes and the nose. Obviously you could make a mouth, you could make whiskers. You can really do whatever you want for this little bunny. I'm gonna show you how I embroider the face and I am just going to start with a knot in the bottom of the embroidery floss. A double knot and and then I want my face to be starting around the center of this larger the top um, form of the body so I'm kind of eyeballing it here but you could definitely use chalk and get precise and I'm just going to do two little stitches side by side for the eyes and then just one stitch for the nose. And now that the face is finished, I'm gonna flip to the back and just make a super simple knot in my floss. Next, I'm gonna embroider a little bit of pink onto two of the ear parts. And on this first bunny I made, I did the stitches lengthwise. This time I think I'm gonna do them widthwise, make them a little more narrow. And I'm just gonna do a really simple satin stitch of just going back and forth across the ear until there's a nice little splash of pink. Once the embroidery is finished, it's time to sew together the ears and the hands. So I'm gonna pair one of the other unembroidered ear pieces with the embroidered ear piece. And I want them right sides together. And let's get a little pin in here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the hands. Now the if you haven't used a sewing machine before, sewing these tiny pieces could be a little bit of a challenge. You can definitely do it, but it could be a little hard. And if that's the case, you can also hand sew these tiny pieces together. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it on the machine, but again, if you're intimidated, then just do it by hand. All right, I'm over at my machine now, and I'm gonna just show you how to sew these teeny little pieces together. And you really wanna use a pretty narrow seam allowance. So this is about an eighth of an, an, eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I am gonna go forward and back. And I'm just following the edge of the ear. Take my pin out. And then at the curve, I am going to lift and turn a couple of times because it's such a tiny piece and a tight turn. And then just keep going. Okay, all of my little pieces are sewn. I used a darker thread so you could see the seams a little bit better. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to turn these right side out, which is a little bit tricky because they're pretty tiny. So what I have found to be helpful is my handy dandy chopstick. And if you can just sort of get your chopstick Get, if you can get a little edge folded over and then just kind of get your chopstick under there, it gets a little bit easier to push it through. 
Okay, I finished turning the ears right side out and the little paws are also right side out. So the next thing to do is to attach these to the front side of the bunny. And on this one, I just laid the ears flat. So you can definitely just lay the ears flat and sew them flat. This time I'm gonna fold the ears in half and I'm gonna sew them on with a little pleat at the ear. And the way to attach this is to imagine that you're going to flip it around just completely opposite direction of how it is sewn. So you actually wanna sew the ears pointed crisscross across the face. And that way they're going to flip the other way. So I'm going to, you know what, let's use a clip for this little guy. I'm gonna first attach the ears and then I will attach the arms. So I'm gonna pinch this one in half lengthwise and I want the little pinched part pointing that way. And I'm gonna clip it here and then I will go sew. All right, now I'm at my machine. I'm just gonna sew, show you how to sew the little ears on. So I'm just gonna take a clip off and I wanna sew pretty close to the edge here. And I wanna try to sew on a curve. You could absolutely do this by hand if this feels a little intimidating. Just get a few rows of stitches on there. And then we're gonna come around to the other ear and we're trying to follow this curve and occasionally we're going to have to do a little pivot and then back stitch and finished okay so the little ears are sewn on and when you are finished they're going to flip out like that so next up, I'm going to join the little arms to the bunny. Okay, so the little bunny arms are pinned on to the sides and I pin them just below the little natural curve of the body and they're angled slightly down and that'll give the look of the arms going slightly up. So um, you could also try to make them more straight or you could even have your little arms pointing down um, if you want to have them pointing up like mine, you just pin them pointing down. And then just like with the ears, I'm going to go ahead and stitch with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that the ears are sewn on and the arms are sewn on, it's time to sew the back part of the bunny to the front part of the bunny. If you wanted to add a little pom-pom, to the back, that would be a really cute addition. I don't have any pom-poms or feel like making a pom-pom, so I'm skipping the pom-pom. I just wanna put the right side on top of the right side and make sure these are in the center of your bunny. So if you wanted, you could even pin these down away from the sides. I think I'll be okay, but you wanna make sure that your ears are not gonna get caught in this next seam. So you're just gonna lay this on top, make a little sandwich, and then I'm gonna sew all around this edge with about a quarter inch seam allowance. But I am gonna leave an opening down here at the bottom. That's about two inches or one and a half inches wide. And that we will use to stuff the bunny and then we close that up by hand. Okay, I finished that seam. It's somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. And you wanna make sure to double check both sides so that you know for sure you caught both layers. And if there's a weak spot, you can reinforce it. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do a little reinforcement right there. And once your seam looks good, it's time to turn the bunny right side out. The grand reveal. I used a darker thread so that you could see all of my seams, but normally you would wanna use a thread that blends a little bit better. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. So next up, I am going to stuff it. I have some 
cotton batting scraps and you can also put little bitty fabric scraps in there and you don't really need to put a ton of stuffing into the bunny. You just wanna give it a little bit of volume and I'm gonna go ahead and get stuffing. Okay, once the bunny is full, it's time to close up the opening and I'm gonna do a very simple ladder stitch or invisible stitch to close up this opening. I have a few different videos of how to do a ladder stitch. So I'm gonna link to those in the description box if you haven't done a ladder stitch before rather than go over it here, but it's a very easy thing to do. So I'm gonna get going. It's finished. So cute. Let me show you how to make the little matchbox home next. Okay, so like I mentioned, you need two pieces of cardstock and that lets you make two boxes because once you make one of these, you're probably gonna wanna make two. I mean, let's be honest. So the first thing to do is that we need to trim the um, eight, and a, eight and a half by five and a half piece down to eight and a quarter by five and a quarter inch. So I am just going to, oh, I have to cut this first. Make sure you use your paper scissors, of course. Don't use your nice fabric scissors. So first cut your cardstock in half widthwise, and then we're going to, I've got my widths about me. I am using the quarter inch line on my ruler, which is probably a little hard for you to see. And I'm just gonna go like that. And I'm gonna repeat that on this side also. This side, Heh. just kidding. And make another mark. And you don't actually have to be super duper precise. There's a little bit of wiggle room in the pattern. So your two pieces should fit together even if things are just slightly um, slightly off. And then I'm going to add these little bits of paper to my compost because it's actually really hard for most, well, I should say it's really hard for my community recycling to capture tiny bits of paper in the recycling process. So when I have really small pieces of paper, I just compost them. Okay. So here is the bottom part of the box. And the next thing to do once it's trimmed is to mark off some one inch line marks. So each of these is a one inch mark. So the first thing is to, I'm using my cutting mat and my ruler, and I'm gonna do a line here for one inch, and then I'm gonna move it over again, one inch. I'm gonna flip it around and get two more one inch marks on this side. One, two, and then I'm gonna flip it and get one inch on the long sides as well. Just one, one inch line on the long sides. And each of these lines is a crease that we are going to put into the paper. And once you have all of these lines marked, it's time to go ahead and crease them. And I just am using the same ruler to just fold the paper up and make a nice crease at all of these lines. Okay, the box is creased on all the lines and we also want to cut from the short end up two inches just on that line so that we can create the bottom of the box. So we wanna cut it there to there. So we're just cutting up two inches on both of the short ends following the marks that we've made. And now we're gonna use a little bit of glue. And this is just a regular old Elmer's glue stick. 
I have seen some homemade plastic-free recipes for glue. Zero Waste Chef has a really simple glue recipe, but I just find that I don't generally have time to make my own glue, unfortunately. You might wanna protect your cutting surface from the gluing part. I am putting glue on the short ends that I just cut. I'm putting it on the inside and then I'm also putting some glue on the outside of these little tabs. And I'm going to bring these little tabs in and then I'm gonna wrap the longer part around the tabs. And then everything hopefully will stay in place. And you might want to put some pressure on there while the glue dries. You could get some of your little clips and clip it in place while the glue dries. And then I'm gonna repeat that on this end to finish up the bottom of the box. So I'm just putting glue on the inside of the larger tab, and then I'm putting it on both sides of these little narrow tabs. And then I'll just show you how I bring it all together one more time. So bringing these smaller tabs in so that they overlap. And I'm trying to get a nice right corner here on both sides of the box. And then I'm wrapping the larger piece on top. And then you don't have to clip it, but a couple of clips on here will help it dry. And then we're gonna set the bottom of the box aside for now and make the top. So the top part of the box gets uh, marked and creased, similar to the way we did the bottom, but we just wanna do a one inch mark here on the first short end. And then we want a three and a half inch gap, which shows here on the picture. And then another one inch mark, another three and a half inch gap, another one inch mark. And then the last piece, it might be a little bit more than one inch, depending on how it all folds up. These wider parts, one of them will be the top of your box that you can decorate. So what I would recommend is make all of your marks with pencil and crease it and let this be the inside and then flip it over and decorate one of these two parts. I mean, you could decorate both sides of your box. It just depends on how ambitious you are. I'm gonna take a minute and decorate this one section of my paper. So I'll be right back. Okay, my amazing artwork is finished. So the next thing to do is to fold up the top of the box and we are gonna be gluing it in this one spot where it overlaps. So whether you colored this side or this side, there's gonna be one spot where everything lines up to give you a nice little box lid. So that is where we wanna get some glue and get it nice and gluey and then bring it around and press with your fingers if you wanted you could use some clips to kind of hold it while it dries okay the top is done and the bottom is done let's make sure they fit together oh yes they fit perfectly now it's time for the bunny. 
to enter its home and go to sleep. I know these are for kids, but I might just have to play with them for a little bit. These are for my girls, but uh, maybe I have to make one more for myself. I don't know, they're so cute. And obviously you could make a little pillow and a little blanket for your bunny. I have a tutorial on here that shows you how to make a very simple pillow and blanket for a toy for a dollhouse. So you could definitely use that tutorial. I think I'm just gonna whip up some really simple blankets using some fabric scraps and they're done. Honey Bunny is all finished. This is so fun to make. I love it. And if you are looking for more fun stuffed animal projects, I'm gonna link to a couple videos right here. <clears throat> Wait, how do I do this?